Jeremy Mohavlich. Hi, my name is Ron Cortez, and this is Motorphiliacs TV. Ron and I have what uh, some would suggest is an unhealthy interest in automobiles, bikes, and pretty much anything with wheels and an engine. We both love a variety of motorsports, and we even like to see aircraft and boats in their natural environment. We're a pair of gearheads through and through. So what do two guys with uh, motor oil coursing through their veins do to entertain themselves and all of you like-minded gearheads out there? Well, we leave blogging and print media behind and create a YouTube-based web show to showcase the crazy gears turning in our heads. Booyah! Motorphiliacs TV is born. This is a show about, and made for, backyard mechanics, motorsports fans, and anyone who loves cars and bikes. We'll bring you everything from economy builds to high dollar street cars, road racing, rally, car shows, even automotive reviews. We'll bring you influential people in the industry and folks who think they're influential. We'll show you how to find bargains and where to blow your hard earned cash. Now in the process, we'll most likely piss off the establishment, but we'll also pay homage to automotive visionaries. It's going to be a cornucopia of motorized badassitude wrapped up in a truckload of fun. And finally, it'll be real. Real success and real failure. No behind-the-scenes army of mechanics, no actors, no lawyers, and no fun-killing network execs. 100% authentic TV. On this, our first episode, we'll introduce you to a few of the projects in our garage. We review the 2016 Chevy Colorado mid-size truck, and we bring some road rage to the table. So, without further ado... Cheers, mate. Dude. Seriously? White wine? What? Red doesn't pair with marshmallows. So here we are, we're spending another uh, day here in the 2016 Chevy Colorado Z71. For our American friends, uh, there's the Z71 off-road package. Really? Sorry, I, I apologize, I won't do that again. Um, yeah, so we're riding along in the Colorado Z71, that's the off-road uh, suspension package they offer on this truck. Um, we're going to spend some time in it, do a little more off-roading, get more of a feel for what it's capable of. Um, I know, Jeremy, you have probably a lot of thoughts on this mid-size truck market, being a truck guy. Yeah, I, you know, when I found out we were getting this truck, I, the first emotion that I discovered or that I had was confusion. Because I, I don't know, like I, I don't have fond memories of how mid-sized trucks hit the market. So for me, what I don't understand is you've got a, a, a mid-sized truck that costs, you know, a fraction less than a half ton, does a little less of the work. I guess in my mind, I'm just thinking if I, if I want a truck that's going to work and I want something that'll tow, I'll just go for the half ton. I'm not right. sure I get this. I don't think I understand it. So after spending a bit of time in this, you know, it, it seems pretty good, and I'll get into more of that as we go through the review. Um, but I kind of get the utility of this thing. It's it's truck-like. You can do truck things in it, but it's also more car-like. Yeah. And I think they found kind of that sweet spot in the market, which you know isn't going to appeal to someone like you that wants a big half-ton. 
as a truck guy, maybe I have to evolve a little bit maybe. and uh, open my mind or be a little wider minded thinking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're gonna take this thing into the forest surface roads, do a little some more off roading, and, and we're gonna bring you guys uh, a little more off road action and some thoughts and their uh, reviews on that. So stay tuned. I'll come clean and admit I'm not a truck guy. I've driven borrowed trucks for short periods if I needed to haul some stuff, but I've never lived with one for an extended period. So I wasn't expecting much when I picked up this bright red Colorado for our week together. My first impression was a childlike, wee, I get to drive a fire truck. My second impression as I eased it out on the road was, man, I'm high up off the ground. Does this thing come with oxygen masks? But after a few minutes, the impeccable road manners had me feeling completely comfortable and at ease in city traffic. Chevrolet has a real winner here, as this is the most car-like truck I've ever driven. Road and tire noise are almost non-existent in the Colorado, due to the triple sealed doors and plenty of sound editing material. Wind noise was at a minimum too. All the better to let me enjoy the awesome optional Bose sound system. Cranking the tunes provided clean highs and pounding bass. I have loved Bose Car Audio since I first experienced it in my old Audi 100 CS Quattro. It doesn't disappoint here. It might be a bit spendy at nearly 700 bucks, but it's well worth the price of admission. You're not wrong, Ron. The color of our tester is called Red Hot, and it's a pretty apt name as we think this truck could be a searing entry into the off-road truck ranks. Our unit came equipped with a 3.6 liter Spark Ignition Direct Injection V6 boasting acclaimed 305 horsepower and 269 pound-feet of torque. It has a deceleration fuel cutoff for increased fuel efficiency and, as equipped, it can tow a whopping 7,000 pounds. This is in part due to the muscular V6, but also because of a silky smooth six-speed automatic transmission. Other trucky equipment includes a two-speed transfer case, hill descent control, and Chevrolet's Stabilitrack stability control system. New for 2016 is a Duramax 2.8 liter four-cylinder diesel engine available on the crew cab models, optional on the short box, but standard with a long box. Chevrolet is quite proud to offer the only diesel motor in a mid-size pickup, which ups the towing capacity to 7,600 pounds and adds a big 100 pound-feet of torque. It might struggle to pull a horse trailer containing your wife's stallions, but you can easily make her really unhappy by towing another project car home. Where this truck really shines, though, is off-road. The Z package is all balls, and it truly delivers. We romped about on the mudflats early in the week, and later in the week we tackled some really interesting side trails. The truck never broke a sweat, and more importantly, didn't break any parts. It was solid, it was confident, and it performed as I would expect when equipped with a snappy name suspension package like Z71. We traveled over moderate washboard roads quite comfortably, and in conjunction with the grippy Goodyear tires, it was a pleasant performer, not a poser. Admittedly, approach angles are cause for concern due to a deep chin spoiler, but that can be modified easily and it would enhance an already pretty cool wheeling experience. With this new Colorado, you can pick it up on a Saturday morning from your local Chevrolet dealer and confidently reach your outdoor play area that afternoon. 
Going fishing or riding is easy to do with this truck straight off the showroom floor. That said, if more serious wheeling is your bag, I'm sure the aftermarket will offer up a selection of lift kits and bumpers. Equip those, mount a bigger set of Goodyears, and you'll be able to hang with your four-wheeling buddies. I was initially skeptical because I didn't hold mid-sized trucks in high regard, but after some seat time in the Colorado, I'm far more enlightened as to what these trucks can do and where they fit in the market. Say goodbye to cramped, underpowered mini trucks, and hello to comfortable and capable mid-sized trucking. I completely agree, Jeremy, and the on-road driving experience is lovely too. The suspension is extremely well damped. You can feel the bumps and ripples on the road, but they aren't harsh, nor is the suspension bouncy. It manages to be stiff with minimal body roll in the turns, while still soaking up big hits over speed bumps. I like it. It's not sports car levels of feel, grip, or handling, and the rear suspension was not as well damped over speed bumps with an empty bed, but it's still pretty damn good for a truck. Steering effort was light, but also precise, making it a breeze both on the road and in the parking lot. I was able to confidently throw it into the turns and bends. Parking in tight spots is far easier than in full-size trucks, too. You really do forget you're driving a truck and could easily imagine yourself in a mid-size sedan. Well, a mid-size sedan with a lifted suspension and big tires. The power and torque on tap mean plenty of acceleration and passing when you want it, and the engine produces a nice V6 growl. So it checks off the enthusiast boxes, too. Add the stability under acceleration and braking, and it once again felt very car-like. Lastly, I dig the styling of this truck. It has modern touches and lines while still being a truck. It looks purposeful and aggressive while still being elegant, if that makes sense. It's a truck that you could drive out to the mountains and get dirty, then drive it home, hose it off, and pick up your date for that fancy dinner out. It made me feel manly yet sophisticated at the same time. I guess the best way to sum it up is that I will actually kind of miss it a little when it goes back. And that's saying lots, because it's a truck and I'm a sports car guy. and low lights from the Geneva International Motor Show. What would you say if I asked you to name the automotive equivalent of Miley Cyrus? A couple names might come to mind, but I'm talking about Koresh Mansouri. That's right, Mansouri, that's the guy that brings you all those really gaudy supercars, mostly made for athletes, pimps, porn stars, rappers. Well, he was at Geneva with a selection of really gaudy automotive atrocities. We're going to talk about two of them here right now. First up, the Ferrari 4XX Syracusa. Yeah, I call that one the no excusa. And he's right. It's based on a Ferrari 488 GTB. They're, still, they're utilizing the 3.9 liter twin turbocharged V8, but they've increased horsepower to 790 of them. Torque is up to 643 pound-feet and a claimed top speed of 212 miles per hour. Yeah, because Mansuri definitely knows how to do a Ferrari better than Ferrari. Absolutely. Next up on the Mansuri show floor was what they called the Rolls-Royce Wraith Palm Edition 999. Now, they're going to build nine of these, so I imagine the name screams, Nine! 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 Just so that people know how many are available. So they've taken the Rolls-Royce Wraith and they've uh, tarted it up with a bunch of gold matte paint highlights, and gold wheels, and a custom glow-in-the-dark crystal hood ornament. Um, really all I can say is this is a car for people with very small man parts and no taste and no class whatsoever. Yeah. Um, Karush Mansuri, if you're listening, please do everybody a favor, just stop touching cars. Just stop. Yeah, leave them alone. Just stop. Panin Farina was also at Geneva with their new H2 hydrogen fuel cell powered sports race car concept. This car features two electric motors putting out a claimed 496 horsepower. 
that directly powers the rear wheels with no transmission to get in the way. They figure they can reach 62 miles per hour in 3.4 seconds and top out at 186 miles per hour. Now this car is pretty. That's why we surmise this is redemption for the god-awful Ferrari FF that they penned. Um, we also think that hydrogen race cars would be a lot cooler than Formula E, for example, with their near-spec race cars and a driver's list of drivers well past their best before date. Just a little bit. But now on to uh, some of the actual highlights and an actual production car. Aston Martin was at the show with their long-awaited DB11. Finally, we have a clean sheet approach from them. The product of design director Marek Reichman sports a brand new aluminum body shell, new suspension, a new cabin, and a new Daimler-based electronic architecture. More importantly, we've got a brand new 5.2 liter V12 boosted with two twin scroll turbochargers. It's now punching out 600 horsepower and it'll take the car to acclaim 200 miles per hour. You know, this is something I think that Aston really needed. Their old cars were based on quite an ancient architecture and an ancient engine. Yeah, and the new, more aggressive lines of this car, slimmer, more evil looking, they need this to be a hit and I think they're, they're definitely onto something. I think so. They've lost a tiny bit of elegance, but they've brought it into the 21st century. Yeah. Chevrolet was also at Geneva, and they brought with them their 2017 Corvette Grand Sport. Now this car is going to utilize the LT1 V8 from the Z06, however it won't be supercharged. This is going to be naturally aspirated. It's going to be a lightweight, aerodynamically focused Corvette. That's right. You're going to finally get a track car, a true gentleman's racer. This Corvette's going to come with really wide, super sticky tires, and in fact, if you order the optional Z07 pack, that's going to come with carbon ceramic brakes and Pilot Sport 2 cup tires, which are like a DOT track tire. Um, other big features are huge Brembo brakes to bring it to a halt. It's going to come with a 7-speed manual transmission and an optional 8-speed automatic. That'll be handy for all the geriatric guys with their arthritic knees who can't roll their own gears. Ouch. Ouch. But what is really interesting is they're claiming this will do 1.2 Gs on the skid pad. Mmm. That's, that's hardcore. It is. And speaking of lightweight specials, Porsche announced their new 911R, which is another lightweight sports car. They've basically taken the motor out of the GT3 RS and put it in a lighter, stripped-down car with a little less aerodynamic doodads. They've also taken the smaller wheels and tires from the regular GT3. So this thing is going to weigh 50 kilograms less than the RS. So it's going to be pretty quick and nimble and handle really well. And it's still putting out 493 horsepower at a stratospheric 8,250 RPM redline. I'm eager to see what and hear what. 8,000 RPM sounds coming from yeah. a Porsche Flat yeah, 6. That's going to be good. It's going to be a, a truly purest version of the 911, and I'm right. anxious to, to see how that all comes about. Right, and actually the most important thing the car comes with, which is also for purists, is a 21st century theft deterrent system, a mm -hmm. six-speed manual transmission. So those kids aren't going to be able to steal this car. <laughs> now a rhetorical question. What's better than a mental, over-the-top Lamborghini? Nothing. That's right, Lamborghini was at Geneva with their new Centenario. This Aventador-based special celebrates what would have been Ferruccio Lamborghini's 100th birthday. Now, like I said, it's an Aventador underneath, but it has just outrageously updated bodywork. They have put a massage on the V12, so they're upping horsepower to 760 horsepower. Uh, top speed is going to be in excess of 217 miles per hour. They've, uh, they've fettled with the suspension, and so they're bringing to the table carbon ceramic brakes and magnet... Magneto rheological. That's a mouthful. Uh, dampers and shocks. It's, it's a pretty cool car. Lamborghini should be over the top. But I still think my favorite Italian thing is Monica Bellucci. But this you might actually get to drive. Just saying. Alright. And finally, we've got a real monster reveal. 
Bugatti debuted its brand new Chiron, which is the successor to the Veyron. This uh, crazy machine brings an 8 liter quad turbo W16 engine that puts out, wait for it, 1,478 horsepower. What? Yeah, I know. It's the most powerful production streetcar in the world, and it tortures its seven speed dual clutch transmission with 1,180 pound feet of torque. Um, I kind of like this one actually. I wasn't a huge fan of the Veyron, but this one has kind of updated styling. It's a bit lower, it's a bit sleeker, um, it's got some nicer lines to it, and a lot of hints that um, throw back to the Type 57 Atlantic, which is one of their most famous cars they ever produced. Um, the other interesting feature is that they've included a drift mode. So all Cause those because you, you need that. Yeah. Well, now all these Arab oil sheiks will be able to drift it through the desert without embedding it 20 feet into a sand dune. Fair enough, but I got an idea. Ken Block, hey, Jim Cannon 9 with a Chiron, mm. give us a call. Um, I'm with you to a certain point, but I just have to ask why. What is the point of a car that the average mere mortal will never be able to use to its full extent, and at $2.6 million a pop, it's not going to be common? No, it's, it's bragging rights for somebody with a lot of money. Yeah. Well... That's it for Motoring News. Um, follow us on Twitter, at Motorphiliacs TV, capital M, capital T, um, for your daily dose of automotive news from sources all around the world. So this installment of Road Rage is going to be a bit more of off-road rage. Jeremy and I spent a bunch of time in the Colorado um, out on the Forest Service roads of the parks just north of Vancouver. And what I saw out there was really disgusting. Um, there was people target shooting, first of all. And I've got no problem with target shooting, I enjoy it. But the public lands and the parks are not the place to do it for a couple of reasons. One, it, it's public land, these are parks. It's not a place to be doing that kind of activity. And secondly, a lot of these areas where people were shooting, um, or just below ridges where some of the trails and forest service roads go. And you know, all it takes is one mistake and one stray shot and you're going to hit somebody who's riding an ATV or a bike or driving up there. And that's just going to be ugly and it's going to ruin it for everybody. Uh, and then secondly, it was just a garbage dump. I mean, there were shotgun shells and rifle shells left everywhere. You know, nobody cleaned up after themselves. So if you have to shoot there, you know, clean up after yourselves, pick up that crap. And then just in general, you know, it was it was a garbage dump. There were people left McDonald's wrappers and, and garbage from their food and beer cans and bottles and all kinds of stuff just left behind. You know, these are parks for everybody's enjoyment. So if you're going to be out there, for Pete's sake, people, clean up after yourselves so everybody can enjoy those lands. What's the plan for it? Well, we've always wanted to do the 24 Hours of Lemons race, so I call it Lemon Jetta. Ah. <laughs> Good, eh? Ah. So what did you pay for? 350 bucks. 350 bucks? So what's wrong with it? <laughs> Nothing. Right. It's got a little clutch issue, but... Okay, so uh, I've got Project Jetta with me. This is the... Uh, Volkswagen Jetta that we're going to turn into a 24-hour 11s race car, and I'm about a kilometer away from where I bought the car from. They said it had some clutch issues, and I was hoping I could get it home, limp it home, without the cost of a tow, but uh, it has given up the proverbial ghost, and a tow truck is on the way. So um, we'll get her towed, and I'll give Ron a call. We'll get him to take, he'll, he'll come and see the car for the first time tomorrow, and uh, the fun has begun. All right, that's not the end of the world. I guess we can fix that. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 24 hours of lemon. That should be fun. I think so. Yeah. We prep the car for 24 hours of lemons. Once we've done that, and then we've got a race car. We can go in other events. And then if we find some really cool Jetta and Golf race products, we can test them in the car and do a on. Sounds cool. Awesome.
Right, well, hey, while I'm here, you know, why don't we show uh, our fans out there the rest of the projects we've got on the go. Okay, sounds good. Cool. All right, so this, this is my 1992 Chevy. Actually, it's a GMC, um, CK Series 1500. And it serves as my shop truck right now, but we're gonna turn it into a badass shop truck. Um, we're first gonna do some suspension work, um, just tidy up front end components, uh, brakes, um, lift it a little bit, and then tree runner fenders, bedsides, eventually full long travel suspension kit, and we'll have ourselves a really cool off-road pre-runner. Sweet. Yeah, actually, after doing some off-roading in the Colorado, yeah, I really enjoyed that. I'm kind of looking forward to turning this into a little bit more of a beast and having some fun with it. It's going to be cool, yeah. Nice. So next, uh, we'll head into the shop, and I've got a couple cars in there that we can show you. Okay, so next up, this is my 1973 Super Beetle that... Uh, this project actually started a year ago and it stalled. Um, so now we're gonna reinvigorate it and carry on. And my original idea for this car was a rat rod style Mad Max kind of Baja bug, you know, big tires, ratty looking, really raw. Um, it's got a healthy 1600cc motor in it. So we're just gonna freshen that up a little bit and tidy it. Um, we're not going to do a, a bunch of suspension mods because I'm going to get the lift I want with the wheels and tires I'm going to use. Um, so we're hopeful to have this done for the summertime. Um, this is also going to be the first of my Bug Out Customs branded cars, which um, was a project I got started um, last year. And I've got Twitter followers that are anxious to see this get finished. So. It's going to be the first of that brand, of that car, that will be on Motorphiliacs TV only. Totally exclusive. And, uh, yeah, and so when it's done, there's this really cool Mad Max kind of cult event down in California each year. So I'm thinking we'll get her on a trailer, get down to the desert, and have some fun. Sweet. I call dibs on dressing up like Max and hanging out with Charlize Theron. Fair enough. Cool. Okay, we've got one more to show you. Okay, save the best for last, my pride and joy. Uh, this is my 61 Eagle. Um, relatively stock, it's got a 1500cc motor out of a 65. It's been lowered, uh, Porsche 356 headlights. I bought the car a couple years ago and I'm enjoying it, I love it dearly but I'm a big fan of the vintage speed look. So until I can find a true 36 horsepower car, and then I, which I'll really go all out on the vintage speed look, I was thinking it'd be cool to give this a moderate facelift, some magnesium style wheels, uh, yellow lenses for the headlights, and a new air filter on the engine, and we'll have a, a really cool looking vintage speed car to cruise this summer. It'll change the vibe, and I think it'll put kind of my touch on it for the time being. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. You cruise around uh, when the weather's nice and mm -hmm. show it off to people. Yep. Cool. So, yeah, everybody follow us uh, you know, on Twitter, on Facebook, our website, and you can keep up to date on these projects as we move forward and uh, hear about new projects as we bring those into the garage and the stable as well. And uh, you'll be able to see our next episodes as we cover some of these projects in more detail as well. So, stay tuned. <laughs>